something of an humble beast with a bulletproof plan for the also rents and an awful lot of time upon his idle hands. Everybody's going on about the end of the world. In fact, they seem a little excited. It's a party and your pity's invited. Dinner and dessert provided. Vampire stayed home to all the miscreated. Where nightmares are related and dreams and Your kind of people anymore. Slow down, look around, take it all the sounds. Your cup ran it over till it nearly drowned. Take a few small sips, leave a few tall tips, and you can keep on dancing when the record skips. Don't you try to sneak out of any exit routes, cause the scent that you're dispensing is a sense of doubt. If you show off your bank, it's just an easy snack. You must impress upon them that you're always on attack. Everybody keeps talking while their mouths are full, but you know every word they're saying. Feeling you'll be staying. It's an urge you can't resist obeying. Vampire state where the jawline meets the collar. It's a real hoot and holler of opulence and squalor. Vampire state rising over the horizon. You'll wish that you'd been wise enough to run. Right. You might get out of there with only just a couple of bites Keep your sleeves rolled down when you reach the ground And no one else will have to know when you get back to town Everybody looks different in the light of the day At the masquerades adjourning But when the midnight oil is burning You know that you will be returning Vampire State, climb the hundred story town Behavior at the vampire state Dreaded bang is high as mountains The losing scarlet fountain A billion served and counting Vampire state Where the wounds are freshly severed You'll wish that you had never heard its name He stood on the top of the hill He said this isn't a drill I'm gone I'm headed up to the dawn He put his life on his back And headed out at the crack of dawn To make himself right at home Out where the river shimmers in the night And the stars speak words if you listen to them right The crazy little creatures hidden out of sight They come out and talk to the hermit on the half moon rock it's him and the hawk hauling up the vertical walk of the half moon rock. Why don't you give him a knock? Follow the trail of chalk up the half moon rock. Up the half moon rock. Up the half moon rock. The hermit of the half moon rock. He saw the leaves in his dress. Sometimes nothing at all The hawk was all that he had And if he was lonely or sad He'd roar And echo through the canyon walls And the mountain lion came running to the sound While the whole hog herd would gather all around The comfortable bugs all living in the ground Would raise a few stalks for the hermit on the half moon rock Hello? 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 I'm talking. 
Here I am. I really like this album. I don't want to turn it off every time. Hello, fellow creature in Christ. <laughs> it's an excellent phrase. I really just don't want to turn this song off. I really like this song is the thing. Unfortunately, this isn't one of the ones that I feel like I can sing pretty well, so I'm not gonna. Okay, I'll transition now. There's still there's still quite a bit of the song left. Hello's Blue Fox. Greetings from me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little out of it. I'm a little I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit out of it today. Um Hello. I guess I should do the intro. I'm not really feeling the intro so much right this second, but friends! Enemies! Pastor Mantic Partners of the Future Nemesis, welcome to the long haul. It's a celebration of simulation. How you doing? We're doing, we're doing Power Wash Sim. We're finishing it. We're finishing it. We're finishing, we're finishing this today. At least we're finishing, like, the main story. We were almost done, to be honest. Um, I had a pretty good day. I'm a tiny bit out of it. My, uh, half of my house has COVID. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit tired, a little bit sleepy, a little bit, uh, a little bit funny silly. But I'm doing pretty dang good. I hope you also are. There we go. That's a little loud on my end. Okay. Yo, how you doing, Devnol? This is water. This is water. This is water. That's such an insightful thing to say about this game. Devnol, I hope you're well. Alex, I hope you're also well. You want to play Astrobot so freaking bad? I don't know what Astrobot is. Tell me about it. Tell me about Astrobot. Getting Greco Roman on it. Hello, Cassie. Cassie, who gifted this game to me a million years ago. Oh, okay. I thought those blue pieces were their own were their own piece, but they're not. Cassie, who gifted me this game after the first episode of The Long Haul and told me I had to play it on The Long Haul. Uh, we're finally finishing the story mode, I guess. How you, how you doing? How you doing, Cassie? Um, what was I saying about myself? I'm a little bit, a little bit feeling weird. Um, half of my house has COVID. Like, literally three out of six people in my house have COVID, which is not the most fun. It's like a little guy in a platformer. It's a PlayStation thing and it celebrates PlayStation history and there are a bunch of bot versions of PlayStation characters like Parappa. Oh, that's fun. Um, I don't know if I'm sick, honestly. I think I'm good. I think like it, it like allergy season is just up and going right now. Uh, 
which means that I'm going to constantly have gunk in my throat and my nose for the next couple of months. Or, you know, however long fucking, like, fall lasts now. I think that's what we're getting to, right? I don't know the seasons. <laughs> seasons just last an arbitrary amount of time these days. Surprisingly... And maybe I'm jinxing this by saying it, but, like, surprisingly, we haven't had too bad of a wildfire season uh, over here this year. Like, only a few days of, like, too much smoke to be tolerable to the lungs. Gonna call it for now. Have a good night! Good as always to see ya. Oh, you're gonna call it a fall season now. Oh. <laughs> oh, I missed the word fall in there. I I thought it I thought you just said I'm gonna call it. <laughs> Whoops. Look, I'm just a I'm just a fluffy little guy. I don't I don't got no brains in there. It's all it's all stuffing. <laughs> I'm going to call it fall now. Okay. Um why did I start walking really slow? Oh, you walk slow when you move, when you point downward. Okay, anyway. There, I fell. Hello, your majesty. Did I not finish this section of floor? Like, I know I didn't finish the one on the opposite side, because we want to be facing that direction, because something's going to happen with the volcano as soon as it's clean. I assume. Oh, maybe I guess this is all one piece. Okay, okay, never mind. We're good, we're good. Morphin time. I see, I see. I was, I was trying to work out what that uh, symbol was because it looked so familiar. Turns out it's the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers logo. I've never claimed to be smart. Um, so what have y'all been up to this week? One Piece. I've never seen or read One Piece. I tried to start the One Piece show, and I just couldn't do it. It's too of its time. The beginning of the show is too much of its time for me to be willing to continue catching up. And catching up will take me a million years, also. I just tend to not be much of a shonen head, personally. The closest to lightning bolt emoji that Twitch let you hit. Yo ho ho, he took a bite of gum gum. I'm always sick. Excuse me, I'm always sick. <laughs> Riley? <laughs> I don't know if y'all just noticed that I genuinely turned around in game. I thought that was a sound in the game. <laughs> you fucking got me. There is nothing more enchanting than a big cozy owl hug. You've never had an owl hug? Well... 
disgrace yourself, it looks like Owl is swooping in to give you one right now. Thank you, Owl. Thank you so much, Owl. Uh, the squeaky door did play. Are you just, maybe you're just really behind? Huh. <laughs> yeah, no, the squeaky door totally got me. Whenever you reach this point. And thank you also for the owl hug, Quinn. How y'all doing? There's so many, so many, so many faces here. So many pals and buddies. Did you maybe, like, turn off low latency mode or something? God, Owl Hug is not even, like, close to the most long one there, I think. Let me, let me see. Like, the drive isn't, isn't in right now, I don't think. The drive is probably the longest one. Fly by night pizza delivery this services. One's long. These people print flyers with very legitimate sounding names and sneak into lodging properties by impersonating guests and place flyers under the doors of the guest rooms. Do not, under any circumstances, order a pizza from one of these flyers. You may be giving your credit card number to a criminal on a cell phone. Or at best, or, or if at you best, are delivered a pizza, it. it will likely be very low quality and it may have been made in someone's garage. Or worse. If your lodging property has an agreement with a legitimate pizza delivery vendor, you will surely find that information displayed inside your room in a logical location, such as on the desk, TV, or in a directory of services. <laughs> Approved legitimate pizza vendors will never place flyers on the floor just inside your door. Remember, never order pizza from flyers found on the floor just inside your door. I, I love fly-by-night pizza delivery services so much. It's so dear to my heart. Uh, Eight-hour Ziggy worker. stream is... I work cable uh, to a rig. Build cable to a railroad. Eight-hour Ziggy stream is for a stream of Ziggy, of drawing Ziggy for eight hours, I believe. Because there was a Ziggy drawing stream a long time ago. Okay, well, there's the big hand, the statue, and the uh, UFO. about walked right off the edge there. I don't know why I'm suddenly so determined to get this whole, like, section of the ceiling standing in this one place, but... <laughs> Been both good and bad lately, a lot of ups and downs. Finally approved for E-injections, that's cool. Oh, uh, fighting about dosages. I have no idea what E-injection doses look like, to be honest. I've only ever done pills and patches. Um, because I don't like needles. Ignore my tattoos and stuff. I don't like needles. Shit. <laughs> it happened. Is 
Needles are shockingly not bad. Ugh. See, that's what I'm afraid of, is the fucking up doing the shot. Or at least part of it. Like, my problem is that I'm, I'm into body modification. And I feel like being into body not modification type stuff gives you a healthy fear of needles that are not being operated by professionals. Like, I, I have one bad tattoo by an amateur tattoo artist. And you know what? It's the most painful tattoo I've done, even more than the one that went on my fucking collarbone, where there's a whole bunch of really sensitive areas. I'm missing, like, a bunch of tiny little dots on here. There we go. Okay, we'll get the centerpiece later. Let's do these walls. Like, yeah, like, 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 I feel like that's why I have a fear of needles <laughs> is because people who uh, do body modification type stuff uh, and are good at it uh, will instill the fear of needles in you uh, if they're not being operated by someone who really knows what the fuck they're doing. Also, you know, PSA, kids, if you ever get a tattoo, uh, if someone offers to give you a tattoo in their own home, um, even if it's with, like, a like a t proper tattoo gun and everything, don't do that. Don't do it. Unless you, like, know for sure that they have a lot of experience doing tattoos and they've done an actual apprenticeship and stuff, don't do it. And arguably, the tattoo shops are, generally speaking, going to be a lot more sterile than a house. So, maybe even don't do it, even if they do have all that experience. Um, same with, like, at-home piercings and stuff. I'm not going to get, sorry, I'm not, I shouldn't get too into the body modification stuff because I know it really squicks some people out talking about, like, the way that people do things uh, if they're doing it themselves rather than having a professional do it. So I'm not going to get too into it, but yeah, just, 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 uh, if you ever get into body modification stuff, even just, like, basic piercings, be really, really careful about picking someone good to do it for you. That's all. And don't do it, to, don't do it yourself. Just don't. Why take the risk? You can, you can tattoo yourself if you're doing a tattoo apprenticeship. That's actually okay. You can tattoo yourself. Um, but, like, that's, that's actually a part of apprenticeships. Before they let you do a single tattoo on a real person, you gotta do one on yourself. Uh, because then you'll understand what exactly you're doing to the person. interesting hearing about it but thinking about getting something for myself is what starts to freak you out that that's so you just don't like the idea of doing uh doing tattoos and stuff Okay, this is the car, or a couple of the cars, and the golf cart, and also the drill. Oh, hey, and the king's there. There he is. The things that... The things that automod sensors are bizarre to me. Boo, Twitch automod. Big anxious babies really done any out of it outside of being very transgender. That's fair. I had to get rid of all my piercings and stuff because I, uh, well, I had to get rid of my lip piercings, uh, for two reasons. First of all, um, I wasn't allowed to have them in at work, which meant that I had to use plastic plugs, which, uh, switching between studs and plastic plugs once a day while they're still healing is a terrible idea. 
you shouldn't do that. Uh, you shouldn't be taking the jewelry out of it at all while they're still healing. Um, it's unsanitary. It can cause a lot of issues. Um, yeah. Um, and I've had my ears pierced. So I had to get rid of my lip piercings just because they were not only inconvenient, but I was doing things that were actively dangerous to my body uh, to keep up with the standards of my job. Um, and then I did, uh, I had, I had ear piercings like three separate times. I had one, one like regular lobe piercing when I was a kid. Uh, actually they've all been lobe piercings. I've never had like a, an industrial anything or anything as much as I've wanted one. But like I had a regular lobe piercing as a kid. Um, I had a... Uh, like, a, like both ears pierced, uh, later on, which that first one had closed up by then. Um, you know, I've kind of gone back and forth on, on piercings, I guess, is what I'm getting at. But the last time, um, I was trying to stretch them, and I, once again, did it wrong. D just don't do this shit yourself. <laughs> That's all I'm getting at. Don't do this shit yourself. Very afraid of getting an infection in an ear piercing. I also really liked those snake bites, actually. Like, I only have a couple of photos of myself with them. I don't think I don't think you ever took any photos of me, did you, Cassie? <laughs> while while we were while we were close. Cause like I only have like one or two photos of myself with the snake bites. And one of them is like immediately after we uh didn't have a phone at the time. I forgot about that. In my head, you did, but I think that was just a PS Vita. <laughs> like, in, in my head, you had a phone, but I think I'm really just thinking of your Vita. Huh. Anyway... Yeah, I, I have, like, two or three photos of myself with the snake bites, and, like, they did genuinely look really good. They fit my face really well. But, uh, oh, the second problem with the snake bites. There was one other problem, um, which was... Pyramidian gem. What is that? I'm guessing that's at the top, but I thought I got everything at the top already. Uh, I mean, there's pedestal. I'm not seeing a gem. I'm not seeing anything lighting up here. I did select it, right? Yeah. You can get the PlayStation Vita with a real 3G radio. I forgot that was an option. Um, atrium floor. What is a pyramidian gem? Where is that? You still have your Vita on your desk? I recently found the copy of Persona 4 Golden I bought to play on your Vita. <laughs> I recently found that, that cartridge sitting around. I never had a Vita. Uh, Tia uh, has a Vita, so there is a Vita in my home. I have no idea where. Like, the things that are say that say Pyramidian are all the things up here. So what is a Pyramidian gem? Like, that's part of the pedestal, that's part of the pedestal, that's all pedestal. There's apparently exactly one of them. Is it like an object in the world? 
Like, is there a gemstone sitting around somewhere here? Two XK Pinball Arcade and Lumines Electric Symphony. The gem opens when everything else is clean, huh? Okay. It's weird that it's labeled. I, I guess I understand why they would label it, but it's weird that it's labeled in that case. And I played eight, but it needs more huge RPGs that the Vita spoiled us, and we didn't realize it. I, uh, yeah. I thought that the Vita was really cool, and I wanted to have one so bad. Is my thing. Side of a ring and aliens coming from the center. Um, I know which one you mean. But I couldn't, I can't name it off the top of my head. Okay, there's a lot of little dots. There's a lot of little dots. I did kind of a dog shit job on the floor here. Tempest. Yeah. This is the worst thing about doing really big objects in this game. Is that sometimes you just miss like a whole bunch of really tiny things and you just kind of have to clamber around this looking for them. This is water. This is water. Hey, we got it. Alright, so... The gem opens up. Oh yeah, oh, there you go. Oh, there's the, the jet. The guy who was flying to me. That they mentioned. Are they just gonna keep flying, passing over exactly like that, or...? I do love to clamber. Now I guess he left. Um, okay, well, I guess we're getting this last thing. Was it the mayor who was flying out of the volcano to come find me? I literally don't remember. Eh. There's the time travelers. Oh god, they're fighting! Oh! Okay, they left. Huh. I guess that's everything? Rip plane guy. Alright. 
<laughs> I guess I kind of did the inside last, which means that most of this time lapse is just boring. Dude really saw a UFO and was like, I'll shoot it down. Cerulean Sky says, Power Wash Services, you did it. After you cleaned our uh, ship, we went further back in time, methodically tracing your steps one job at a time, right back to the backyard cleaning days. While doing so, we pieced together Blake Thrust's ambitions. Thrust was obsessed with the lost city of pacifists, and after discovering that their tech was powered by a rare one set up illegal mines... After discovering that their tech was powered by a rare ore, I thought this said one, <laughs> set up illegal mines here, there, and everywhere. Uh, he struck a, ri a rich seam out inside Mount Rushless and used it to develop his own tech while also hoping to create enough tectonic movement to uh, push the lost city up to the surface. What he didn't realize, though, is that by destabilizing the volcano, he nearly caused a global apocalypse. Knowing that the underwater city lay dormant until this moment, we went back in time and told the Pacific the Pacifics of your legend. They agreed to convert their palace into an offshore platform to send a neutralizing beam to Mount Rushless when the city resurfaced. We dirtied the plane to uh, the place up to ensure that it would only activate once completely cleaned by a skilled power washer. Thanks to you, the timeline is now restored and we can return to our home or to our time as heroes. Heroes with red velvet cake. P.S. Please feel free to use this message as a customer review if you think it would help your business. <laughs> The drill guy and the mayor were working together. Uh, yeah, the, the 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 drill guy and the mayor were working together on on the whole situation. Like the drill guy and the biplane guy were doing secret jobs for the mayor. Wait, does it have all of the time lapses? <gasps> oh my god, that's so cute! I wasn't expecting that. That's so cute. It saved them all. Oh, my heart. What a video game. I also remember the backyard level. I remember all of these. The playground that I spent like an hour trying to get the ball up the, uh, up the slide for the achievement. The, the shoe house. You were here for literally just the first and last parts. <laughs> yeah, you really were. This is so cute that it keeps all the time lapses. I really didn't expect that at all. Drinking some coffee. The cottage with the two thieves in it, yeah. Thanks for the troll season. Some retribution came to fruition in the Power Wash channel, too. Oh, this one, this miserable one. I'm I'm a I'm a credit sitter through her, just for the record. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna sit through this, even if it keeps going after the time lapses are done. We're down to localization, so I'm assuming that it's gonna end at the same time the time lapses do. The bathroom that the guy wanted to turn into a nightclub. The uh, Helter Skelter. There's the jet. That's the jet that got shot down just now, I think. This is the mayor's boat, I believe. The, the, the cat monster truck. 
past of this game where they end every single level in a very specific way that causes all the time lapses at the end to freeze frame on them looking straight at the camera. You weren't here for that jet? Yeah, that was that was the the mayor's jet. It had like a super laser on the bottom. The fortune teller uh, thing. The scary statue. This boat was fun. Doing this boat was a was a good one, I think. That was like one of the best levels. Cause it was both complicated enough to be fun and not like ridiculously complicated enough to be like a problem. Cutscene. Oh! We found Ulysses! Oh, Ulysses had babies. Oh, we got little messages from everyone. <laughs> I like unknown number. Call us. We have a job for you. That was so cute. What a what a cute little game. <sighs> that was a really cute ending. <sighs> Big stretch. <sighs> and now there's the bonus jobs that we haven't messed around with. Um, one sec, I gotta blow my nose. Congratulations, you won. Congratulations, you won. Thank you so much. Congratulations, you won. Thanks for giving me this game, Cassie. It's really it's really cute and fun, and I like it a lot. I guess my question is, uh, would I like to be able to play this game as a podcast game? <laughs> or should we like hang on to the bonus jobs and stuff and do them on stream? Like, eh. Like, it seems like either of those is a good option. Because, like, I should probably get back to games that are actually, like, a little bit more realistic simulations. Like, let me let me look at my Steam library here. Um, okay, can I collapse all of these, please? Thank you. My simulation section... Yeah, because, like, I've got American Truck Simulator that I'd like to figure out what's wrong with it and fix. Uh, we've got, like, I bought, a, I bought a set of Corsa so that I could play around with the uh, the steering wheel that I got to do Truck Simulator with. And, like, that would maybe be fun to do a stream of. Got, like, Car Mechanic Simulator 2015. There's City Skylines and stuff, but I don't know if that's overly something interesting to do. Uh, what else? There's the ones that aren't, like, realistically, that aren't, like, simulations of real things, but, like, Hard Space Shipbreaker, it's a simulation game in my heart, you know? Um, I don't really care for the story of it. I think it's a, I think it's annoying. <laughs> I think the story of Hard Space Shipbreaker is annoying, actually. But, um, the game is, like, a fun little simulation-y thing. Uh, Cora bought me Flight Simulator 10, or X, or whatever it is, uh, that I should play sometime. Like, we got a, we got a lot of games. We got PC Building Simulator. Like, we got a lot of games that we can hop into and do. Plus, we still obviously have a lot of stuff in Train Simulator and Train Sim World. Uh, and there's, like, SnowRunner, uh, which... You know, like, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff, you know? And I really like playing this game, and I like playing it on stream. It's, like, a perfect perfect level of game for stream, you know? Um, 
but like maybe I should uh, move on from doing this game on stream. I don't know. I will when the Shrek DLC comes out. Um, I will be doing uh, the Shrek DLC on stream, for the record. Like that's that's happening on stream. I don't have the other DLC either. What's the DLC for this game? Wait. Uh... Sorry, I know y'all are just staring at a menu, not at my Steam page. Um... I'm worried that if I show you Steam, it's gonna like pop up some not safe for work games in the related games bar or whatever, you know. So I don't wanna. I don't wanna risk it. Yeah, there's the Shrek one that's set for coming soon. There's the free-to-play ones that I have. Um, we've got the Alice's Adventures in Wonderland one. We've got Warhammer 40k. Uh, we got Back to the Future. I'd like to do the Back to the Future one just because I'm a huge Back to the Future fan. Uh, the Final Fantasy one was free, I think. I think I actually have that already. Yeah, I do. I have that and Tomb Raider are both both free. Um, there's the SpongeBob one. I do really like next time I have the opportunity to spend eight dollars on something. I really don't have that opportunity often. Um, I would like to do the Back to the Future one. I'm just a, I'm just a huge Back to the Future head. Wonderland is a fun theme for this game. I agree. Yeah. Like I think I think in Back to the Future you do like the DeLorean, you do the uh the clock tower, you do the like town square uh that Marty walks into that has like the the big 3D jaws pop out in in the second one. Um I think you do the time train. Um I don't know. I just think it's I just think it's a cute idea. I just you know, I have my I have my little my little things that I like, you know. You know? We could hop into Midgar, though, if we wanted. You know, I don't know what to do for the rest of this stream, so why don't we? Hardy Daytona and Shinra Holler. Here's my thing. I don't remember anything about, the, about Final Fantasy VII, aside from, like, the major beats of the story. Also, I have a bunch of money now. I should probably double check that I own everything. Good, good, good. Okay. There's clothing. Participation in the Oxford Research Study. Huh. Is that is that like the the research into the the old civilization? Is that the joke? You know, I never did buy any skins for like the the Prime Vista Pro, did I? Cassie. <laughs> God damn it, Cassie. You show up for two streams, and both times you do this? <laughs> God damn it. I just got fucking owned. I'm assuming that's the Back to the Future one. I haven't actually opened the notification. Looks like some plush got got. I got got. I got got super bad. Well, uh, I, I guess I'm gonna accept this gift real quick. <laughs> the, the message for the record is, hey, I do have eight dollars. <laughs> From feminized square steel. Like galvanized square steel. I don't, I don't know how many people know that joke, honestly. <laughs> Um, okay, well, I guess I'm closing this game real quick. We're just gonna, we're just gonna do, <laughs> let's just get this DLC installed real quick, like. 
Oh yeah, that went super fast. God, there's also pinball FX. I was planning on playing pinball FX on stream, but the problem with pinball FX is that tables are expensive. Like you're paying for like actual branded, like real life pinball tables for, for the most part. Um, and most of the ones that come with the game that aren't actual real life branded ones are bad. <laughs> I also love pinball games. Pinball FX is like a, as far as I could tell, like a really good simulator from the, I don't know, like 10 or so hours that I played of it. Um, and it had some of my very favorite, fa very favorite tables on it. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I played like eight hours of it. Doc Brown's van, the Twin Pines Mall in 1984. Power wash services. We want to get in the. You want to get in the movie business with us at Universal Studios. You see, I'm a producer currently on location, looking at a dirty prop and wishing I had a big old water pistol to wash it down with. When I said as much on set, my intern pointed you out in the phone book. I had no idea power washing was even a thing, but apparently people watch it for hours on their VHS. Who knew? I think you'd be up for. Uh, think you'd be up for coming down and helping us out. We loaned a medium-sized truck to another production. It's come back filthy as anything, and we need it for our next shot. Thanks a lot. The Necro Dancer pinball FX table. The thing is, I don't. I don't think most of the tables that they make for. Uh, that they make specifically for the game are very good. <laughs> they're ju they're just kind of weird. Um, okay, let's grab a skin for... Like, why why can't I have the, the donut pink skin for the Prime Vista Pro? That's what I want. I, I like this skin. I'll get that one, I guess. Oh, wait, I, I was still in the menu there. I thought I had started getting into the level. Really obsessed with the Hercules table for a while. Um, the ones that I was playing mostly... I can't remember the names of them now. Goodness me. Uh, like... <laughs> it was it was mostly Williams tables. Like, I was mostly playing, like, the, the real-life Williams tables. Uh, I'm not gonna... Sorry. I'm not gonna keep goofing around looking at Steam. <laughs> Okay, so I do have the trident. I know in the SpongeBob DLC you you don't get the trident. Hey there, welcome to the set. Hello, Alex intern. This is a weird premise for the DLC. <laughs> I'm Alex. I'm a total whiz with a pager, so the pro producers have asked me to regularly check in with you. So I guess I've just gone back in time to watch, or to, to, to help produce the movie. And it, you bet you're excited to be on a movie studio, the movie set, right? Yeah, you know what, Alex? I am. Just an intern, but I'm so excited I haven't slept for two days. Oh no. Thank goodness for the sugar rush of waffle puffs. Um, but yeah, like like when I'm playing pinball FX, I like to play real tables. So the movie's called Back to the Future. I am aware of this. I know, back, but to the future? How is that even possible? Wow, this one's going to have a lot of text in it, huh? No joke, the title alone is making my brain fizz. That's crazy, man. What I've already seen is 
it's just the tip of the huge mind-bending iceberg. Love to tell you more about what's going on here, but I haven't seen the script. They keep ta they are keeping that closer to their chest than a spandex tank top. 80s jokes. What I would give to read that thing. Brother, just come to my house. I have it on Blu-ray. <laughs> Alex, we're, 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 we're going on a field trip to my house. We'll watch it on Blu-ray. They made two sequels. Um... Yeah, I used to watch these movies with my dad, is why I'm so, like, into them, though. You want to go on a field trip? The field trip is to my house to watch Back to the Future. So if you'd like to come to my house and watch Back to the Future, then you're you're welcome to come along. From what I can tell, the movie's about a high school kid who's best friends with a mad scientist. Are they really gonna like explain the pot plot of Back to the Future to me while I'm trying to play the funny game and look at this thing that I like with nostalgia? High school kid's called Marty McFly. It sounds like a Scottish insect, but he's pretty cool. Like, is this what we're going with? An intern is just explaining the plot of Back to the Future with me? Science is called Dr. Emmett Brown, and he looks like he's had one electrical shock too many. What is still dirty on this roof? Tiny bit there. Tiny bit right here. This is a small enough thing, I didn't expect it to be uh, so flummoxing. You come to my house, I have a VHS player slash CRT, and I've been buying fun movies recently. Hell yeah! I don't have a CRT, but I do have a working VHS player. Um, and a couple of working uh, uh, cassette players as well. Like, 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 music cassette. The fuck am I missing? Okay, so these side bits count as roof. I guess that's what's happening there. Home Alone and Lion King 1 and 2. Hell yeah. Um, I have The Princess Bride. <laughs> Whoops. I'm looking behind me at the tapes that I have. I'm trying to see what they are from here. Uh, the Sword in the Stone. Uh, Disney's Robin Hood. And The Rescuers. I had the chance to get Lion King 2 when I was buying those. Like It was, it was there at the thrift store, but I just didn't really think about it. Um, because I was already spending a bunch of money. <laughs> and I feel, I feel stupid for not grabbing it. You want Robin Hood? If you lived local to me, I would offer you my copy. I don't really use these things very much. Just because there's no one in my house who wants to watch movies with me most of the time.
you know, I, I miss all of the old VHSs that I had. Um, producers are loving that suit of yours. Are they going to make a joke about the Darth Vader thing? The, the weird suit that Marty wears uh, when he's in the barn scaring his dad? Is it available for day hire? There's a couple scenes that it'd be perfect for. Yep, they sure are. They're not being so direct about it, but they are they are referencing that. You know, I bought that skin for my for my funny pressure washer. What is the button to get to my equipment? I don't remember. Um, you know what? I guess I don't get to change the skin because I don't fucking remember how to change skins. Oh, wait, is it I? Yeah, it's I for inventory. Okay. Um, huh. It changed my other stuff, too. Sure. There we go. Oh, I guess I did have a couple of skins for it already. There we go. Now we're good. Didn't know Lion King 2 was old enough to be on VHS. Yeah, it was, it was a direct VHS movie as far as I remember. From when, like, I was a kid. I like that the gas cap gets to be its own item. Yeah, that was cute. Just this little, little tiny guy. Um, can you, there we go. Okay, it's mostly random bits over here. Maybe more on the top that I'm not seeing? A little bit. I guess I never finished that light either. Or that one. I, okay, I swear I saw one of them. Ah, there we go. Okay. You know, I'm trying to think of, like, what other weird old technology stuff I own. I do miss my giant cardboard box full of tapes. I used to have a giant cardboard box with just, like, almost every movie I liked uh, on VHS, but my parents threw it away when we moved from Idaho to Missouri. And that was sad for me. They had sentimental value, and also I could use them now, even though we didn't have a way to use them back then. Okay, like, what's going on here? There's these little tiny...
Okay. Is that also over here? No. Ah. There we go. Now, what are the other individual things that I'm missing? Um. Oh, the hood. Oh, and this windshield wiper. They put a lot of weird nooks and crannies in this one, huh? The roof trim. Ah, I see. Okay. Is the roof trim all one piece all around? Yeah, it looks like it. Um... Actually, I was thinking recently about the way that I discovered The Matrix, which is, like, still to this day my favorite movie of all time. It's, like, the only movie that I could basically just sit down and watch any any time ever and have a good time. There's the roof trim. Loading ramp hinges. There's the loading ramp. And where are the hinges? Um. Uh, oh, it's up top. There we go. Oh, I got an achievement. It's great Scott for completing the Doc Brown's van job. <sighs> Your anytime film is still Heather's. Heather's is a little heavy for me. I love that movie. I'm so glad you showed me that movie. Um, but it's a little bit heavy for me. Whereas, like, when I was a kid, uh, the, the, the way that I discovered The Matrix was uh, my dad, I saw him watching a movie one time. It was just, like, a random scene where, like, a helicopter hit the side of a building and then it did this weird, like, wobbly thing. And I was like, whoa, what's that? Um, and so, like, weeks after that, I was just digging through our box of tapes watching every action movie we owned until I watched enough of the matrix to see that scene again. <laughs> and then I, and then I proceeded by my, my th this autistic little child proceeded to, uh, sit down and replay that tape over and over and over watching nothing else for like at least two weeks. Certainly watched School of Rock forever. School of Rock is really good. I was actually just talking about School of Rock today and how much of a shame it is that Jack Black is like, ugh, now. He used to be less ugh, but he's pretty ugh now. Um, but also I was talking about how, like, I don't think, I think you could have the same exact script as School of Rock, the same exact cast except for Jack Black, uh, the same exact, like, everything in terms of how it's acted and whatnot, and I don't think you would get a good movie out of it. I feel like Jack Black is the glue that makes that a good movie. <laughs> Didn't we actually watch those two films back to back? Do, do you mean uh, School of Rock or do you mean... Uh, what's it called? Uh, the Matrix. 
I do re- I do remember when you showed me Heather's. I don't remember what else we did that night. <laughs> Heather's in School of Rock. That sounds like something I would do, yeah. Like if I was just kind of poking through my uh if I was just kind of poking through my like things, my movies that I had on hand for something to watch, something to show you that I enjoyed, I I probably would have pulled School of Rock out. I do, I do know that Jack Black loves that movie, loves School of Rock, but, like, I don't know if he... I, I, I didn't know if he was closely involved in the production or if he was just cast for it. Ugh. I know that, like, um... I know that Jack Black, like thinks of that movie as like his greatest success because it convinced a bunch of kids to get into music, to get into making music. So I know that he like considers it a a really, really like his, his greatest work. Um, And I think that's pretty cool. Hello again, meet our movie star vehicle, the time machine. It's a car that's been modified by the genius inventor Doc Brown to incorporate a flux capacitor, fooled by blue, bootleg plutonium, naturally. It reaches its top speed of 88 miles per hour in no time, so to, so to speak. Oh, no time. I get it. Anyway, riding those timelines is cold work, which has left it covered in temporal ice and astral part- particulate. Basically, our props department have had a field day with it, and we need to clean it for one last take. Oh, and we'd appreciate it if you could if you kept everything that you've seen today under your hat, or rather mask. The future depends on it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> these these movie guys are very loose lipped about the details of the, their film with contractors. Yeah. I love a story about music saving the world. Me too. I do love a story about music saving the world. Can you believe I haven't seen uh, Bill and Ted yet? Like, 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 like Bill and Ted, uh, whatever the third one is called. Now, here's my question. I believe the answer is no. How incredible does that car look, right? Yeah, I agree. Um... Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. The DMC logo is on the front, so they couldn't actually get the the DeLorean branding. Uh, No idea what all those bits are or what they do, but it looks exactly how I'd imagined a time machine to look if it was a car. Um... I have the wrong window pulled up now. I can't see chat anymore. This has been a pretty strong year for movies. Um, I honestly don't think I've watched any movies that came out this year. I've watched some TV that came out this year, and the TV's been pretty good. Um, I haven't gotten around to the final season of The Umbrella Academy yet, but I plan on it. So the reason that they couldn't get the the DeLorean the, the 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 DeLorean Motor Company branding. By the way, we've had to keep the Gullwing doors locked. Got to mention that the doors are Gullwing doors. Is uh, but DeLorean. Ah, stop. The team have installed some highly sensitive electronics inside that don't mix well with water. Sure, man. From what I've seen, there's going to be a dog hopping in and out of it all night anyway. I guess it must be the back side of the tire. That I'll need to get at from the other side, I guess. Um... I saw the TV glow. Yeah, I keep hearing great things about it, and I just don't have a way to watch it. (laughs) I don't have an accessible to me way to watch it. Um, 
unfortunately. But yeah, so like the DeLorean Motor Company right now um, is in the middle of doing like they're they're trying to Tesla it, you know. So like. They've made they've made some cool looking electric cars that do not look or feel at all like a DeLorean. Furiosa I had the chance to see and I didn't get around to it. <laughs> the person I was gonna go with, like we we both kind of just forgot. Um let me see. We do this. And we do this. Okay, so like this is the DeLorean website right now, right? Like you got this cool modern car that's like definitely not supposed to look like a Tesla. Uh come like come on guys, we're not making a Tesla. It's the new DeLorean. And I don't understand. People love the way the original DeLorean looked. It was a joke at the time. People thought that the the like fucking aluminum look of the original DeLorean was kind of a fucking joke when that car came out. Um <laughs> love my car with gamer chairs. To be fair, the gamer chairs look like that because of race car chairs. It, it does make sen more sense in a car. <laughs> like, but, like, it doesn't look like a DeLorean. Like, what are you going for here? Like... Like, why not, why not model it after this more heavily? You know, like... It doesn't even have the DMC logo. It has a logo that says DeLorean. I just don't... I don't understand what your aim here is. Because people... If people are going to buy a DeLorean, they don't want a Tesla. You know? They want they want a DeLorean. Um, and a cool thing they were doing for a while... They did still do the Gullwing Doors, which I appreciate... Um, the thing that they were doing for a while, uh, is the DeLorean company was selling, um, it was, it was, it was selling, uh, original DeLoreans. Like, they were buying original DeLoreans off of people and off, off of, like, from, from car lots and stuff. And tearing out all of the engine and stuff and replacing that with electrical parts. I would buy that in a fucking heartbeat if I had that kind of money. They were expensive as hell, but I would buy that in a fucking heartbeat. Are you kidding me? Like, that's, that's, that's like my dream car. <laughs> to be honest, that's like kind of my dream car. But then they're making a new model and this is what you came up with? <laughs> Welcome back to, to Siobhan Complains About Cars. <laughs> I know I do this periodically on stream. <laughs> But like I just don't I don't understand how you land here of all places. Yeah, Teslas are popular right now. Like what does a Tesla Model 3 look like? Um can I get a side on shot? Like yeah. Oh wait, Tesla Model 3 is the crossover. I I think. Even so, like you've got a pretty similar shape here. If we kind of flip back and forth, like, you've got a lot of the shape there. The only thing about this that looks like a DeLorean still is you've got the uh, the back the back window, because the original DeLorean has this, like, um, yeah, there we go. It has this going on. So, like, you've got that part of it, which I think is kind of cool, but I, I just don't know. I just don't know why you would do this. Look how they Apple stored my boy. I know. As much as Elon is trying hard, his hardest to ruin that popularity. Yeah. I'm still thinking about how Elon Musk made this basically this like deal with everyone to say, hey, we're releasing the NAX standard, the, the North American charging standard, uh, which is the Tesla supercharger standard to everyone. We're going to release it to the public to... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. 
we're going to release this to this this the standard to the public so that everyone uh, can put it on their cars and therefore everyone can use Tesla superchargers because Tesla superchargers are the most available electric charger out there like they're they're the most available thing i kind of wish that i had a model with hand tracking because i'm doing a lot of stuff with my hands right now guys there's a lot of hand action happening over here um so like he he was going to release this like he talked about it, he really that they were releasing the next standard uh to the public and the thing is like as far as i know most of their money comes from uh, selling, um, from, 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 from selling superchargers and, uh, from the, the relatively cheap electricity that they're charged, that they're upcharging on to put the electricity in the cars at the superchargers, you know? So like, they're the most prevalent charger out there. Um, they're everywhere. This is a no brainer. You, you give away your, your proprietary charging standard, everyone uses it because your chargers are fucking everywhere, you build more chargers, more cars that are not Teslas are using your chargers and giving you money. It's such a no-brainer. They made deals specifically with Ford so that Ford would start putting the, the NAC standard on their electric vehicles. A lot of other companies committed to doing so if that was going to come out as an open standard for everyone to use. They haven't fucking released it yet. Instead, what 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 Tesla as a company has done, they fucking fired the supercharger team, almost everyone involved with the supercharger team. So no one fucking knows how it works anymore because <laughs> all they've got is the diagrams and shit. Like the people who put this shit together and understand how it works on a deep level do not work for Tesla anymore. And they haven't released the fucking next next standard yet. Like are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Like this is just this is just like specifically a car world thing, but even in the car world, even if we ignore everything else about the bad PR that Elon Musk is giving every company that he's involved in and every thing that he's involved in, even if we ignore all that, they've also given themselves a bunch of fucking bad press with the supercharger debacle. <laughs> like <laughs> what the fuck? What are they doing? What are they thinking? Anyway, uh, I digress. I do not like the new DeLorean. Electric cars are becoming less of a luxury thing. Like, we're getting more cheap models. Like, uh, well, cheap uh, as a relative standard for how much cars cost. But, like, like the Rivian R2, I think. The R2 and R3 are something like the twenty dollars to $30,000. Uh, no, they start at forty five, dollars I guess. Um... These start at 37, which is still a lot, but it's not quite luxury car prices. Um God, I love the the Rivian cars look really nice. I know a lot of people don't like the things that they're doing with lights and with headlights and stuff, but like these things are fucking distinctive. Um Wish I could drive a hybrid. Yeah. What were they thinking? <laughs> I missed that bit. Um and uh, there is, so they stopped making Nissan Leafs for a while, but this is the, I think mine's a 2015, not a 2017 actually, but like this is, this is the Nissan Leaf that I have, uh, that me and, that me and Tia own. Um, and it's super nice, like even for like a cheap EV, the worst, the worst thing about the, the, the 2015, 2016, whichever it is, Nissan Leaf that we own, is that the uh, battery is a little small. Because the batteries now, standard, are coming, like, you know, roughly 150 to 300 miles, depending on the car you're buying. Ours has, like, a 70 to 80 mile range. It's not great, but it's totally usable. Um, I love the look of it. The headlights, like, it's hard to see in this picture... But the headlights like stick out a little, like they kind of they kind of have like a little bump shape. You can kind of see it there, um, and they're really they're really a gorgeous car. Like I really love how they look. They're very distinctive. They have a cool feel to them, and they also are a relatively cheap EV. We paid like I think six to seven thousand for hours, and that was before 
uh, you know, trade in for my old Jeep and stuff. I do miss my old Jeep. I wish I could just tear the engine out of my old uh, Jeep Cherokee and drop an electric kit in there. Like that would that would make me happiest, I think, is just to have my old Jeep back, uh, throw a stereo with like Android CarPlay or not Android CarPlay, Android Auto. CarPlay is Apple's thing. Um, but like now, like they, I guess they stopped making the Leaf for a few years. But they're making new ones now. Um, do I love how they look? No, not really. <laughs> but like, this this is going for twenty eight. This starts at twenty eight. Two hundred twelve miles maximum range. 40 kilo or 40 kilowatt hour battery with an optional upgrade to a 60 kilowatt hour battery which is an additional 50% roughly roughly 300 mile maximum range um 28 that is insane for a car as nice like if if these new ones are as nice as the one that I have relative to the current time given mine is almost 10 years old this is such a fucking deal holy shit are you kidding me? Like this is this is a great car for not much money. Um there are other cheap ones, but I can't think of what they are off the dome. And yeah, the SV Plus, which is like we have the SV Plus model of the one that we have, because it was just what was available used. So like this this one is like a little bit more expensive, but I'm assuming that comes with the it like the it comes with like a, a different interior, generally. And I assume this one comes with a standard, the, I just want to see the, whether it comes with the 60 kilowatt hour battery by standard. 28,000 is a cheap number for, for a relatively high end car. It's a cheap number. I'm not interested in nearby inventory. Stop trying to load nearby inventory. I just want to see the parts. I want to see, I just want to see what it has in it. It's not gonna. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, so the, the the 38, it's a lot of money, or 36, whatever it was. It's a lot of money, but uh, that's that's an insanely good battery. And you're talking about, like, like what does a Tesla Model 3 cost? I want to say a minimum, like, 50, right? Like, what is my base price? No, 29. Oh, these are a lot cheaper than they used to be. Actually. Like, these used to cost a lot more. Huh. That ain't actually half bad. <laughs> like, that's better than I was expecting. Um, one, of my, one of my, like, kind of dream things is uh, if we were talking about, like, the... They make an electric Jeep Wrangler. Um, which, like, I don't love it. I don't love modern Jeeps in terms of shape and stuff as much as I like the current ones. But, like, this is... I like a Jeep. Here's my problem. I just like a Jeep. But these are crazy expensive. Like, this is more than, than the bare basic version of a... Uh, this is this is like more than the bare basic version of a thingy. <laughs> but like as far as car prices go of a Tesla, there we go. As far as car prices go, like electrics are coming down fast and they need to. They need to come down fast because all of the laws happening that are coming up and I think it's mostly a state level thing, but like in Washington, in a, in a few years now, I think like by like 2028, you're not going to be allowed to sell brand new gas vehicles here. If you're getting a gas vehicle, it has to come from somewhere else in Washington, uh, outside of Washington, or it needs to come from, uh, or, or it needs to be used, like... You're you're not going to be able to to build and sell new gas vehicles in several states. I don't think it's just Washington. I don't remember which. So like, car companies need to need to like scramble to get these cars cheap enough that people will consider buying them. You know, like because 
as it stands, if if you know these fucking prices stay at like you know oh if you get the fanciest one, like like forty forty k almost like when you're talking that kind of money, uh, you're gonna actually I'm curious what the sticker price is on the Alpha Five. Does it have a sticker price? I guess not. <laughs> at least not one listed on the website. Um, a hundred and twenty thousand pounds. That's insane. Like that is legitimately insane. Are you serious? But like, I think the I think kind of the holy grail of of electric vehicles right now would be to build an electric vehicle that you can run. That that has like let's say 150 to 250 mile ish minimum or maximum range battery, for like 15 to 17, you know. I don't actually know what a cheap gas car costs right now for like a brand new one, uh. But if you can get that kind of price range, then there's going to be a lot more cars of yours on the street because people want electric vehicles, at least in states like Washington, people want an electric, like they're good. Um, so like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess I, I don't really know what I'm like talking about anymore. Really? Like, I don't know why I'm still on this kick, but like it's, I don't know it's just interesting to think about i think i think that the car uh the car industry is interesting but like yeah like i think you would i think you would probably be able to get like if you can get one in like the 15 to 1800 or eighteen thousand dollar range um that's still a crazy amount of money and i don't think cars should cost that much frankly but like if you can get something into that price range brand new with good with good quality electrics um i think that that's sort of you will you will start to own the electric car market and like you know even like short haul trucking is getting into this like they they make an electric uh uh what's it called the, the, the truck that every fucking <laughs> there's like two kinds of trucks that are on the road in the u.s almost everywhere and i can't remember the name of it <laughs> nah, i lost it whatever uh, <laughs> but like they're making electric semis now for short haul trucking too so like i don't know i don't know i'm just i'm just kind of shooting the shit at this point like i I'll stop talking about this. Um, <laughs> wow, I didn't pause this. This time lapse is going to suck. <laughs> I've been talking about this for like 20 minutes. Um, let me fix my feed thing. Uh, this one off, please. I think so, Epic. <sighs> yeah, so like, I don't know. I guess I have a lot of thoughts, but not a lot of like solutions 28 is genuinely cheap yeah 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 for for a brand new electric vehicle with such a big battery if those if those new leafs are as nice as the leaf i currently have relative to current time what what is considered nice versus 2016 what's considered nice now in this scene i'm not sure what exactly what's going on okay thanks alex It's hard to pick up what everyone's saying unless you stood next to the boom mic, which I'm not allowed to do as I fidget too much. However, judging from the last shot, Doc, the car's inventor, has an extremely clever dog that's capable of driving a car. There's so much random bullshit objects in here. So many.
Um, so yeah, I don't know. Like, I think that the I think that the auto industry and what they're doing right now is interesting, but I don't have a lot productive to say about it aside from talking about individual models that I think are interesting. Um, I mean, if you want to get like a good look at this stuff, like. I know he's kind of like a tech bro shill kind of guy, but Marcus Brownlee, um, he's not really a tech bro shill kind of guy. He's 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 really into AI, um, but he's got a YouTube channel called Autofocus. Um, making sure I have that name right. Yeah, it's called Autofocus, and he talks a lot about different models of electric cars. Um, like three months ago, he made a video called is a $25,000 electric car even possible while talking about, I think a Fiat electric vehicle. Uh, what car is this? Yeah. The 2024 Fiat, Fiat 500e, um, which is not like a great car. It's not, it's not great. So like he he was talking a lot about like is it is it even possible to get this to make this happen? I think it is. I think if Nissan keeps doing what it's doing as long as the cars that they're making are good, which I haven't seen any real reviews of the current Leafs or anything yet, so I'm going to have to just wait and see, I guess. But if they're as good as their past work was, then like yeah, I think in a few years they could take that down to 25 for a brand new one like just letting you know, they're planning on testing out the time travel special effects soon, so watch out for that. Yeah, I can confirm. When you're done on the car, they're going to put it through its paces. Okay, so hopefully that means we'll get the cool fire effects uh, once I'm done cleaning it. <laughs> You're about to see some serious special effects. <laughs> That's a funny joke. The the line from Back to the Future is, uh, we're, once this th thing hits 88, we're going to see some serious shit. Uh, fan of MKBHD for his tech slash phone videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he does... He's, like, the best person making videos about tech right now. Genuinely. Like, he's pretty great at it. Um, he just also happens to be kind of an AI guy, and I don't like that very much. But he's, like... He is perhaps the most honest reviewer out there. Uh, he got... He kind of accidentally single-handedly took down an entire EV company. I forget what they were even called. But like his review was very negative. Uh twice he did really negative reviews because what he does is he reviews the product in front of him, not what the product will potentially be after they update it in a few months. He has also blown up several bad AI tech products. Yeah. Like, what, what I mean when I say he's an AI bro is, like, he's a true believer, but he does he does not pull punches when it comes to things being bad. And he has pretty high standards. Like, MKBHD is cool. So ready for the AI bubble to burst? Yeah. It'd be pretty sick if that happened. Favorite goes to Mr. Mobile. Mr. Mobile is absolutely my favorite uh, mobile reviewer. Like, mobile phones and whatnot reviewer. Um, I love the When Phones Were Fun series. Uh, me and Tia watch that a lot. And whenever he has a new video come out, we watch it. Even if it's not a product we're interested in. He just He's just very good at reviewing phones. All the writing sites slash book selling sites I use are currently overrun with AI trash no one likes. Yeah. And I know there's a, a whole lot of concern right now about, like... A bunch of like mushroom foraging guides came out on Amazon that are written by AI and like tell you that poisonous mushrooms are safe to eat. Like I know that's a huge concern right this second. Okay. 
Okay. My problem is I have like like hobbies or, or big interests in things that are super expensive and so I can't actually be involved with any of them. Like I'm never going to be a person who can own more than one car. So like it shouldn't really matter to me that much what like what what car models are doing, but these are my interests. This is where I've ended up. KBHD is great when he's not doing the puffiest interviews with multimillionaires. Didn't he do a, a interview with Tim Cook that seemed to make Tim Cook genuinely uncomfortable, though? I think that's pretty funny. I didn't actually watch the interview, to be clear. Uh, so I don't know how bad it actually was, but I, I heard people say that Tim Cook was, like, really uncomfortable for this interview, and that sounds funny to me. I think Tim Cook should be uncomfortable more often. Um, okay, I'm not really sure what I've missed here. It's another one of the fucking pipes in here. It's that one. Where's the gunk on it? Is that it? I'm like too close to do it. Okay. There's that. This is ridiculous. All of these things in the back being different objects is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> this is not good. This is not good. I guess I missed something on the front. One Bagnell st still did phone reviews on YouTube. Put his audio focused phone reviews behind a paywall. Uh, I don't think I'm familiar with what with uh, Juan Bagnell. What am I missing on this piece? So I'll just sort of spray all over it. Nope. Something happens. You, you good, man? I, I legitimately can't see. Like, I'm mashing the fucking tell me what's dirty button and I can't find a single spot of orange wait is this whole thing this whole thing was not blinking before I swear okay I swear only the bottom part was blinking earlier whatever <laughs> emergency coolant tanks which has to be something else back here one of these. Whoa! Whoa! Hell yeah! Oh yeah, it even lost the- it even lost the fucking plate like it does in the- in the movie. Oh. Oh, that's fun. Serious special effects. One big now used to work for Pocket now. DAC plus amps inside phones. He's not afraid to be kind of a firebrand about how phone manufacturers make shit up for profits. That's cool. Have I played the Telltale Back to the Future games? I played the first episode. But I never got around to the other ones. I should probably do that. I've heard they were pretty good. 
And I think they did get, like, a lot of the original cast back. Oh! I waited long enough for it to come back! <laughs> I got an achievement for waiting that long. I was just hanging out. That's really funny. I didn't expect that. God, remember when there were little things like this? Photo Hut? Like, where, where you would you would just, like, drive into a parking lot and there was, like, a little tiny business that just sort of, like, was only there to develop photos and nothing else? Um. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I should play the Telltale games at some point. I have them. Like, they're on my Steam account. I assume they'll still run. I, I, I'm not really that big on, like, a point-and-click adventure, I guess, is my problem. Oh, I guess it skipped the part where I was just standing still for 20 minutes in the, the time-lapse. Just wanted to drop you a note to say thanks for doing another perfect job. Anyone who goes the extra mile certainly has a future in this industry. We won't hesitate to contact you should anything else come up, which it almost certainly will. There's no messier business than show business. If you need a review of your local directories listing or whatever for your local directories listing or whatever, Alex will sort it out. Thanks a lot. <sighs> I definitely don't have time to do the clock tower one right now. Oh, I got like ten minutes left. I spent too long talking about cars. Thank you for this DLC, Cassie. I'm very much enjoying it. This is very fun and cute. <sighs> All of the ice in my coffee is mostly melted. That's sad. I am liking it. Thank you. Um... <sighs> so what now? I should have spent 10 extra minutes talking about cars. Then I wouldn't have this problem where I have to fill 10 minutes. I mean, I don't have to. I could leave if I wanted to. But I like hanging out and talking to people on the stream. I like doing this. Here's the thing about the long haul. Um, this is like the longest that I've ever done a quote-unquote project for consistently. I've been thinking about this recently. Like, when was the first episode of Long Haul? Let me, let me pop to the Cable 2 archive and see if I can find that. Um. There's Shibuya Scramble stuff. Um, where is playlists? April Fool's. Uh, the long haul. Okay, so the first one of these was put onto YouTube, at least, which I think was a couple days after it happens. December 22nd, 2022. This is almost like a two-year thing so far, which is wild to me. Like, I, I've very rarely continued to do a project for this long. And uh, I think the people who hang out uh, in the chat and stuff... Like, I mean, I don't know. It, it, it makes me happy that people hang out and watch me talk about shit and play a little, play a little funny simulator. Um, I guess if I was going to get sentimental about it, it should have been in three months, I guess, because I started this a few years before or a few days before Christmas on in 2022. Um, but like, gosh, I don't know. Long Haul's your favorite show on cable, too? Thank you. Don't tell Mish. <laughs> I won't tell Mish, but I will tell little Jimmy. One sec, I got it. I like how you can see my little model jump up and down when I'm coughing, but you can't hear the cough because I try to mute it before I do it. Um... Uh, gosh, I don't know. I like I like Cable Two a lot. Um, 
You have the S24 Ultra. I want. I was thinking about getting the S24 Ultra last time I got a phone, or the S23 Ultra. Maybe I forget exactly when I got a phone when, when it came out. Um, right now, what I have is uh, actually the Z Flip Four, um, which is a wonderful phone. I really love having a flip phone again. And, like, this is, like, one of my very few splurges that I've made in the last few years. <laughs> my old phone was kind of dying, I think, and we swapped it out for a Z Flip 2, I think. Um, and... Let me double check if this is a 3 or a 4. I can't remember now. Oh, this is a 5. I'm sorry. Yeah, so we got it. We got a flip two, and then I ended up having like stress nightmares about it getting dropped in water, um, and I started uh, like feeling weird about having gotten a flip phone. So I ended up getting the flip three. <laughs> you know, I moved on instead of going back to a regular flagship. I moved on to the flip three not long after because there was a deal where. I could basically get it for like a hundred bucks uh, if I traded in my Flip Two, and that uh, was a very nice phone. And then I saw with, that Verizon had a deal where I could get if I traded in a Flip Three, I could get a Flip Five for free, like literally zero dollars. You you have to pay the taxes, so it was really it was like a hundred bucks also, but like. MSRP wise, or like like the actual price before tax wise, I paid zero dollars for this phone, so we figured it was worth it to do that. Big barrier on me buying a Pixel Fold is that I like having claw nails. Yeah, like I think that um, I think that 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 that, that folding screens are less weak now two nails than they used to be like i frequently end up touching my screen with nails and like on the flip two that immediately was visible that was always immediately visible it would always show up anytime you touched a nail to it like you would have an indent in in your screen protector at least uh if not physically in the screen and uh that kind of went away between the two and the five like I'm sure it's still a concern. Like, the, the instructions and stuff do still say not to. But, like, you know, I can pretty... I can pretty confidently, like, tap my nails against this uh, and not have any marks or anything. Um, but it's... It's weird. Um... I don't know how it would interact with long nails. I can't stand having long nails. Like, when my nails get long enough that, like, they're even, like, slightly off of, like, the very edge of my... You know, like, if they're, if they're long enough to cut, then they are too long and I need to cut them. Like, that's one of my autisms, I guess. Um, so, yeah. Raise profile is a lot better for your nails. That makes sense. Plushies don't have claws. That's true. I know. I just got these big bappy paws. They're only good for bapping. I can't even use a phone. I just bap. Just kind of swing them around. <laughs> um... Yeah. The TF2 engineer says that. Huh. Mechanical with blues next time you have splurging money. <laughs> my problem right now with keyboards is that, like, mine needs replaced, and I'm not going to be able to really do it anytime soon. Like, mine is just getting old, and some of the keys are getting a little worn out, and it's not hot swappable or anything. It's like a Corsair board from six or seven years ago. Um... But my problem is that if you want to buy a a uh, fucking mechanical keyboard right now, 
everyone wants the smallest possible mechanical keyboard and i do not understand this obsession they want the smallest mechanical keyboard without uh low profile keys they do not want low profile keys so like you fucking hop in on on these communities and stuff and it's all just fucking like here's my three hundred dollar uh here's my three hundred dollar sixty percent keyboard and it's like brother you don't even have a function row how do you live like this i need the function keys i use those all the time I need a numpad. I, I if I'm typing a number, my hand does not go to the number row. It goes to the numpad. Like I use a lot of of keys. I don't understand how people live like this. You know what I mean? Like I just I just don't get it. <laughs> I don't get the current obsession with small ones, which which makes it far hard to find like reviews and stuff on bigger ones because everyone's only interested in the tiniest possible keyboard on 60% and 75% keyboards. I want a 100% keyboard. Like I want a full-sized keyboard with arrow keys that are separate from the rest of the keyboard and a separate numpad and I'd love to have media buttons. Those are nice and I'd love to have a uh, fucking volume control. Those are nice. And I just do not understand. Uh, I do, I do not understand the obsession with the tiniest possible keyboard and it's like a problem when I'm trying to look up like what I should get next. That's my little rant about keyboards. Now I've ranted about cars and keyboards today. 75% with a keyboard macro pad next to it or keypad macro pad next to it. I guess... I just prefer it to all be a single board. I move it around a lot, and having to move two things is like... It's a small annoyance, but it is an annoyance. Cars and keebs. Yeah. On Cable 2, we've got cars and, cars and keebs. Um, <sighs> yeah, anyway. Um, you know, if you're interested in hearing like more about the electric car industry at all... I would take a poke at, uh, I would take a poke at Autofocus, that's MKBHD's, uh, car channel. Um, if you're not interested in that, you should, uh, come hang out in the Cable 2 Discord. <laughs> you should do that either way, actually. You're gonna Munster Munst Hunster? I hope you have a good Munster Hunster. I would offer to join you, but I am tired after this stream <laughs> like i said i've been a little like throat scratchy a little bit coffee a lot lately so like my throat is worn out uh i don't have a lot of talking left in me but i'm enjoying hanging out here so i keep on doing it <laughs> anyway um yeah i guess that's all i got to say um i hope everyone is having good weeks and good months and good years um <laughs> oh hey actually real quick boeing fucked up again boeing fucked up real bad again they sent a goddamn spaceship up to space and you'll never guess what's happening to the fucking spaceship it's making weird noises and they have they're going to probably have to detach it entirely from the iss and send it back down to earth unmanned they've had to send up a different uh a different ship that that they're, they're going to have to send up a different ship that will take these people home. They were supposed to be home by now, and now they won't be getting home until January. Uh, and there's a possibility of this fucking Boeing spaceship thing. <clears throat> yeah, the two astronauts who are stranded in space for six months. They're just stuck on the ISS when they were supposed to be home by now. Yeah. So the next time that they send up a thing, they're they're sending... Uh, spacesuits that are compatible with the, 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 the thing that they're coming in on uh, so that those guys can get back down when that ship goes back down. The thing about... SpaceX also fucked up? I haven't heard about that one. I just keep getting mad at Boeing lately. Um, but, like, Boeing also said that the suits that, are, that go with the ship that they brought up there uh, all are compatible with everything else they're not compatible with everything else um so they have to send up specific spacesuits for these guys as well with the the ship that's coming up and then they get to leave when those people leave they're just fucking stuck up there 
Every private company coming together to prove why it should never have been privatized all at once. Yep. Yep, you love to see it. I don't know what SpaceX did this time, but I assume it was something fucking stupid because this is SpaceX we're talking about. So, <laughs> you know. Anywho, um, I... <laughs> Sorry, I just looked out at the mod action section on the uh, the admin page here. And... One of the things that had to be allowed uh, recently is, like, C dot 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 come. <laughs> sorry, is what Automod was catching. Um, sorry, I just thought that was funny. I got caught off guard by that. Anyway, friends. That probably clipped real bad. Friends. Enemies. Past romantic partners and future nemeses. Thanks for watching the long haul. Uh, this has been a good time. Uh, I've, I've really enjoyed doing this one. I was thinking about not doing it today. Uh, but I did it and I had a really nice time and I'm, I'm glad for that. It was a super fun stream. Yay! I'm so glad. I love I love when I do fun. I love to make things fun. Um, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to rest my throat some. <laughs> like, my, my throat's not having a great time. I feel like it's been getting, like, audibly more gravelly the longer this has gone on. So I'm going to go. But I hope you have a wonderful rest of your nights. Uh, have a great, have a great time. Have a great night. Have a great day. You know, whatever. Whatever you want to have. Here's life. Bye. Whoa. The music just kind of broke, huh? Anyway, bye! Oh.